Hey guys, welcome back to the Checkpoint for another Sea of Thieves video and this one is a sort of continuation from the Greg Mills interview video I did a few days ago since it got such a great response. If you'd like to check that video out, make sure you hit up the link on the screen and in the description. So once again, I filtered out the most important pieces of information here and picked out the stuff that I think you guys will find the most relevant. Let's kick it off with the question of how balanced land and sea activities will be, to which Mills responds, what we are showing now is the cooperative aspect of the game. A bunch of players learning how to sail a ship together. We think that's the interesting bit of the game and the real challenge. Can we make sailing a ship with a bunch of players fun? That's the first challenge we set ourselves, because if we couldn't do that, then we might as well not bother with anything else. But we also have a lot of ideas about island-based gameplay, but we've chosen not to show that at E3. So what Mr. Mills is saying here is that although land activities and gameplay does exist, they chose to focus more on the interesting part of the game, the sailing. This indicates to me that part of the gameplay Rare won't, that Rare wants to focus on the most, at least for now, is the sailing aspect of the game, and that's its core. That's the real root of the game. Of course, we've seen land activities such as drinking rum, as seen in the gameplay trailer, and looting caverns, as seen in the cinematic trailer, but the real core and the real heart of the game is the sailing. Furthermore, Mails adds, when you're on a ship, it feels almost claustrophobic, and that's done on purpose. When you land on an island, it's almost like you have a sense of freedom where you can go and dig for treasure and stuff like that. Then you get back on your ship again, and off you go to somewhere else. There are no cutscenes, the transition from sea to land is seamless. Next, they talk a little about the persistent world of Sea of Thieves, and how exactly emergent gameplay will take shape in the game. He says, yes, it's a persistent, authored world. Again, we experimented with that. Should it be persistent or procedurally generated? We felt that to get the rare character into the world, we had to design it ourselves, so we can have interesting shaped islands and also to allow players to learn about the world and where things are. But we also wanted to make sure players didn't get bored. So we have a bunch of emergent systems in the game that makes it different every time you play it. So this means that the world of Sea of Thieves is not procedurally generated as some people believe when the game was first revealed. And instead it is a fully crafted, detailed and authored world that Rare have put together by themselves. Now this is mainly because they wanted to give the game that Rare feel and really make their own mark on it. In my opinion, while this may lead to a bit of repetition in terms of gameplay, going back and forth to the same towns and whatnot, it is a worthy sacrifice in order to give the game a little more character and more of that Rare feel which gamers have come to know and love over the years. Now the final bit of information I want to bring to you guys is about character development. So of course Sea of Thieves is a blend of a bunch of different genres. There's a little bit of MMO, a little bit of RPG, some open world and vehicle simulator aspects mixed together. So it's really important that they nail the character progression. Unfortunately, Greg Mills doesn't really go into full detail here, only stating, There will be a bunch of expectations from players. They'll want quests, progression, they'll want to make their characters better and earn better equipment, they'll want to ship and be able to customise their ship. We'll enable all of that, but the way we want to develop the game is to release it in stages. The next goal for us is a closed beta. We haven't set a date for that yet because normally when we set a date, we're usually wrong, so we don't want to disappoint people by slipping. So we're going to wait until we've got enough feedback on the core experience to put into players' hands and then get feedback. Ultimately, we want players to be the stars of the game. We're not going to be putting legendary ships and characters into the game. We want players to become the legendary pirates and have legendary ships. So we're going to develop the game in stages and listen to what the community wants. If they're saying there's not enough uh, not enough customization, we'll consider putting that in. Or maybe there aren't enough quests and we'll put more of those in. So this indicates to me that there is no legendary or rare ship or character in the game that you can actively seek out like in other MMO titles. Instead, Rare is hoping that the players within the game will become those legendary pirates and earn those legendary ships themselves rather than seeking them out in a traditional sense, which I think is a really cool prospect and one that will make players grind it out to become the best. And I'm really looking forward to seeing and rising through the ranks of uh, Sea of Thieves and seeing if I can become a legendary pirate myself. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to the character progression in Sea of Thieves? How about the fact that the map is pre-prepared rather than procedurally generated? Let me know in the comment section down below and for more Sea of Thieves content, please make sure you like and subscribe so I can see just how much interest there is for this game. That's the only way there's going to be more Sea of Thieves content on this channel if there's enough interest and it's the only way I can do so and see your feedback. But for now, this has been Steve, that's been Sea of Thieves, checkpoint complete.